So hello all and welcome. It is I, the Realist Philosopher, and this is the Realist Philosopher Show. I am the Realist Philosopher. My channel is the Bachelor Philosopher because if you are a bachelor, you are a realist, and if you are a realist, you are a bachelor. Not necessarily a philosopher, but I happen to be one. So how y'all doing today? Hope y'all doing good and fine and well. So I'm doing good, doing pretty good. Uh, I came across this uh, cringe fest of a video where Butter Bachelor, Fatter Bachelor, Rounder Than Last Time Bachelor, <laughs> Roly Poly Bachelor <laughs> uh, is interviewing a suppose anti feminist female trying to expand his audience with uh, simp, wimp, beta. Males that pander and cater to chicks. So he's gone down an interesting route. Uh, very interesting indeed. This dude who uh, has now cast aside any kind of connection between himself and the red pill. I, I don't like the red pill. It's limiting. It, it, it's got a bad name. It's got a bad rap. It's got a bad reputation. And, uh, you know, it's not mainstream enough. I want to go more mainstream like you, quartering Jeremy. <laughs> I want to be more milk toast. Run of the mill, center of the road, fence sitting type, so I appeal to more people and can grift more cashola, baby. Then maybe someday I'll be able to open my own coffee company as well. <laughs> oh, what about all the dudes that count on me to be real and genuine and red pilled and uh, authentically fight for men? No, no, no. I've never been an authentic uh, champion of men. Uh, that's just an act. Uh, that's just a veneer uh, that I put up. That, that, that's just an act that I put on. Uh, it's a marketing ploy. It's a scheme. It's a scam. I'm just a white Donovan Sharp without the uh, ugly, haggard wife who's <laughs> also a single mother. Uh, that's all I am, man. I'm just a craven opportunist. And I go wherever the wind blows, or in this case, wherever the money takes me. And there's more money in being a run-of-the-mill, center-of-the-road fence-sitter uh, then there is talking about men's issues, which aren't really very popular, and people don't care so much in the mainstream about that stuff. And I want to go mainstream, right? Daily Wire, they wouldn't interview me because I was too pro-male, too anti effing you know, ist. And I wanted to go mainstream. I wanted to go big baby, but, you know, unfortunately... I was too pro-male. Eh, eh, yeah, I was talking about the wrong stuff. You know, no, 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 no. I, I want to be part of the apparatus. I want to be part of the machine. I want to be part of the controlled opposition mob of fake conservatives and right-wingers that make boatloads of cashola, baby, by distracting you from real issues and real problems by just focusing on the symptoms instead of the causes. Yeah, this guy... <laughs> Uh, this guy is such a fake, a uh, fraud, a uh, phony baloney. Don't like this guy at all. So Butter Bachelor is uh, trying to rebrand. He's trying to change his image and be more like a, a Tim Pool. Or, dare I say, the quartering. Yeah. You can't get more uh, run-of-the-mill and uh, center-of-the-road than uh, <laughs> Tim Pool. Anyway, he's in this cringe fest of a video where he is essentially interviewing abroad. Yeah. Uh, let me say it again. He's interviewing abroad. A so-called anti-feminist. Chameleon! There's no such thing as some chick. It's anti-feminist. Maybe there's some genuine, uh, uh, genuine uh, ones out there, you know, but they're, they're the exception, not the rule. The vast majority are your uh, Lauren Southerns and, uh, what's that, Lauren Chen, is that her name? Uh, they're a bunch of fake frauds and uh, phonies who pretend to be uh, anti effinist when they're really about as effinist as you could be. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, Joker uh Butter Bachelor's uh, interview with this broad. I haven't seen it. I haven't watched it. My reaction is going to be genuine in the moment, so it should be interesting. Let's take a look. <laughs> you, you have less bodies than a woodshop teacher on one hand. 
You see what I'm saying? So what? I, yes. I, I might say to you, because one of the things I do you know, is I try to help guys, but I might yeah. say to you, stop being so hard on yourself. If you try to help guys, then why do you have a woman on your show? How is she going to help men? She's a woman. She can't help us. Because in the current world that we're in now, you know, with feminism and all the other craziness, to some guys, you would be an absolute gold mine. Wow. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, today, to do something a little bit different, I decided to... Didn't he steal that from Tom Likas? Well, I guess that's no surprise. He's stolen every talking point, every idea, every thought he supposedly has from other content creators, so... No shocker there. Nothing this guy says is original. Interview, or, or I wouldn't even necessarily call it a full interview. It was also a discussion. Um, Aaron from Far From Eden. She's a YouTuber. She is anti-feminist. Really? I doubt that. She's a woman in the West, and she benefits from feminism, so she's not anti-feminist. She's a very, a very interesting and rather based woman, if I'm... No, she's not. Why are you complimenting her, you pathetic loser? I must say so myself. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy the, inter uh, the interview slash discussion we had. Started out um, a pretty basic, but I think as, as uh, we got to know each other a little bit, the conversation got a lot more interesting. This space is for men. It's called the Manosphere, okay? This is like inviting a broad to the locker room and offering her a cigar while she's at it. As she looks around at all the swinging you-know-whats. The hell is this? I'm sorry, I don't care how based you think she is. I don't care how red-pilled you think uh, uh, one particular group of women are, one particular group of content creators are. You don't invite them and they don't belong here. She is a woman. I'm sure she's doing quite well. She's got plenty of subsidies, plenty of support, plenty of people helping her. Women get plenty of subsidization. Why are you promoting her instead of other men? This really ticks me off, by the way. He's going to have women on his show, but he's not going to help promote other male content producers. Do you know how much good this fat loser could do? This fraud, this fake, this frony, this huckster, this fraudster of a quarter million dollars could do if he would on the regular invite other male content producers who weren't quite as... Uh, have the, had quite the notoriety that he does, quite the reach that he does, on his show to promote them so that they could get eyeballs, so that they could get views as well, and further spread the ideas, the information contained within the red pill. But oh no, instead he invites these broads on. <laughs> Hope you check it out, and uh, we'll see you on the backside. Tell me about your channel. Tell me about what you go by, because we've been sending emails, and I never know what people uh, say publicly. So tell me all that good stuff. Uh, started my channel in the fall of 2020 because I was encouraged to by the men in my life that had been through all this stuff. And uh, all this stuff meaning divorce, grape, and foodie calls on dates and, and all the rest of it. She was encouraged by men she had been with to create pro-man content. That doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't they make content? Why are you making content? Who are you? What, what, what is this? And uh, I, I had a lot to say about it. And This is so fake. This is so fraudulent. This is so phony. This is so disingenuous. Uh, uh, that would be like me producing pro-woman content. Do they need any help? Oh, well, men's need to help, so I'm going to lend a helping hands. Yeah. <laughs> okay, honey. <laughs> oh. And they were like, you you should make a channel. So I sort of reluctantly did. Oh, um, yeah, I bet. Because writing... Until you saw the possible dollar signs. Until you saw your, uh, uh, all these uh, chameleons out there, the Lauren Southerns of the world, uh, raking the money in hand over fist. Thing wasn't nobody reads articles anymore so it's like i'll just say what i was gonna write and i'll just say it and stick it on youtube maybe you know 50 mm -hmm. people will see it yeah okay. so i started that then and then what was the rest of your question i'm sorry I, I was, oh i go by yeah well my channel my channel was started as feminism on trial 
because it started out as being just focused mostly on being anti-feminist. But as it... By the way, honey, why don't you get a better microphone? I mean, I'm using the crappy microphone in my uh, webcam, and it's better than your microphone. Good Lord. As it progressed about a year and a half ago, I changed it to Far From Eden because I could see how uh, what we're dealing with with feminism and the way men are treated mirrored the story of the garden with Adam and Eve. So I thought, well, we are really far from Eve, far from that. And I was like, oh, far from Eden. So I changed that. So my channel is far from Eden. In in my chat, when I when I do premieres, I run premieres so I can be in the chat with everybody. And they'll call me Eden. They'll call me FFE. And early on, when I thought nobody's going to see this, I just accidentally refer to myself by my name, my first name, Aaron. So the guys picked that up. And so they started calling me Aaron and I don't mind that. At all. Well, yeah. So. When, once that kind of stuff gets out there, people are like, oh, I'll, I'll show where I listen. And I'm a big fan because yeah. I heard this one time she mentioned her name a year ago. And so, yes, so, I, yeah, and I wasn't going to shut them down. So I'm like, I don't mind if you guys, I don't mind, honestly, what they call me. It's it's fine. Well, careful. You'll, you'll, you'll get called some crazy names. You do that. Um, so, That's true. so your, your friends that, uh, so you, okay, first we'll start here. The far from Eden. Are you, are you Christian? Are you pretty religious or? Yes, I am Christian. However, I have said, and I'll say it again, it will be a cold day in hell when I step foot into another church because Wait, what? She's a Christian, but she doesn't go to church. Say what? I think they are highly feminized. I think they produce beta men. I think they are anti-masculinity. Why don't you go to an Orthodox church? Nothing beta about those. That's about as hardcore as it can get. But you're not really a Christian, okay? I think they are very feminist. And it just it disgusts me what they've become. And I wouldn't say it's even been in the last 20 years, 30 years. I think it's been going on longer than that. I have Does anybody out there believe this chick is actually a Christian? If she was actually a real Christian, if she was really a real hardcore, I believe in Christianity and Jesus Christ is our Savior. I believe in our Lord uh, uh, and, and that Jesus Christ, uh, you know, he is the way. Well, she would go to church. And she would look for churches that weren't effing, but she can't be bothered. It's too much work. That would actually mean I was a real Christian. But, oh, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'll i pray in my heart. <laughs> I don't need to go to church to be no Christian. Actually, you do. I think that's part of it. I think that's part of the actual definition. <laughs> it's like these hoas running around out there doing OF. But they're Christians. Yeah, I don't think so. More research to do on how long I think it's been going on, but it, it's a long time. So... I am a Christian, but as far as like going to church and everything they say about, oh, men should do the right thing and get married, no, no. And the fact that they say that they won't recognize a marriage unless it's a government marriage, unless it's, you know, sign on the dotted line. What church is saying that? That she can, as you say, take cash and prizes if she changes her mind. Right. No, absolutely not. I love how Butter is hanging on her every word, by the way, and he's totally, completely glancing over the contradictions. You're a Christian, but you don't go to church. <laughs> you don't fit the definition of a, definition of a Christian, i.e. doing the things that actually make you a Christian. I'm Christian light. I want to call myself a Christian, but I don't want to actually do the hard work that would make me a Christian, so I'm not actually a Christian, but of course, uh, fatter uh, isn't challenging her at all. On what planet would it ever be that that you need the government to sign off on some? She's reading a script, by the way. She's looking at crypt notes on her lap. Good Lord. Something that God is in charge of. Do you know who was the first to decide that? The Bolsheviks. Really? I right did, I after, didn't yeah, right after they, uh, that was one of the first things they did when they came in and um, were, were taking over 1917, 1918 in Russia was no fault divorce. Eh, because guess what? It's not, marriage was no longer run by the church anymore. It was run by the government. Right. So 
So, so when you, as far as I'm concerned, these churches are communist. Yeah. Well, when you, when you take means- when you take the spirituality out of marriage, um, that that's kind of I mean, I yeah. I think when you take the she's a faux intellectual, uh, by the way, and uh, no kidding, that's how you gain power. You, you know, you empower and infantilize women, and then you control the men through the women. whoop de freaking doo da These are just talking points you can get from any R-pill creator. She's no different than, than fatter, butter, uh, roly-poly boy there. She's a fake, she's a fraud, she's a phony, just regurgitating talking points uh, from better content creators. Meaning out of marriage and the spirituality out of marriage. Not that it has to be like a religious spirituality, but it has to right. be, it has to be. Well, what other spirituality is there? Doesn't have to be religious spirituality. What 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 are you talking about? You're talking about new age, uh, foo foo uh, mumbo jumbo nonsense. You mean a cult, uh, magic, mysticism? This, this this guy. Something serious enough that you say, hey, you know, we're we're gonna do this. He's so milk toast. He doesn't want to choose a side. I don't want to brand spirituality as religious or connected to religion then i will alienate a whole bunch of my atheist viewers yeah, milk toast mofo and yes. and uh and it's kind of forever and then when either the other person disrespects you or the other person cheats or the other person lies or stops putting in effort or stops ta- taking care of themselves there there right. does hit a certain point where you say you know we're we're kind of in trouble here a little bit and now that they've right. made it so easy, I can, uh, you know, people just bail so quickly on it. They do, because it's not, like, who are they promising to? They think they're right. Why is he, by the way, promoting this woman? She's got 27,000 followers. Why isn't he promoting some of the really high quality but smaller content creators out there that could genuinely use his help? People that are actually real and authentic in their want and their desire to help other men and who pump out much better content than this broad and fatter butter boy here, huh? Why isn't he doing that? Oh, that would be creating more competition. I can't have that because I'm all about the almighty dollar. I'm not about helping men. Oh, I see. Continue. They're prom- promising the government or they're promising their partner. And the way I see it is, no, you're promising something hot. You're prom- making that promise to something higher than yourself, higher than your partner. You're making that promise to a higher power. Right. And you not being happy, it's not relevant. You mm. look, ladies need to figure out how to get happy because it is not the man's responsibility to make you happy. No, I wish women could realize this. It's nobody else's responsibility to make you happy. Your happiness is your own responsibility. Chick's been watching my content. (laughs) Happiness does not depend on circumstances. Right. And that's one of the things that me being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis uh, 24 years ago taught me. Guess what? I, I'm actually a lot happier than most, definitely most women I ever see, and and mm. even most people, yeah. because it's about perspective. It's about being grateful. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, these women are not grateful, mm. and they no. think it's somebody else's responsibility to make them happy. And that that's- I just got it all wrong. By the way, it's not about any of that. It's about your mindset your state of mind. She doesn't know what she's talking about. That's a feeling that comes from outward things, material things, and and nobody can ever fulfill that. Mm. So- Except yourself. Right, except for yourself, right? Nobody outside yourself can fulfill that, nor is it anybody else's responsibility to do so. And one of the things- What is she talking about? That, that, what are you talking about? That what? What 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 are you making reference to? things I do on my channel is try to let these men know, look, because men are to a fault, they are accountable. They are accountable to a fault. They have to and be. this is what I have learned from talking to these men that have gone through these situations that I knew before they were divorced. Can you tell us why they have to be accountable? Because they have to be? Because the system makes it so? 
They don't have all these uh, safety nets and anybody to save them. When they were together and then afterwards, and I see the man, it's not that there's no fault whatsoever. Obviously, when a relationship falls apart, you can always look and say, well, what could I have done better? Because even if one person severely messes up, the other person is going to have something that they could point to but, because none of us are perfect. But, but they go over, like, over and above with the accountability thing and they beat themselves up like, well, what could I have done to make her happy? And what I try to tell them is nothing. At the end of the day, you could have been Jesus Christ himself and it wouldn't have mattered because she's not really upset about what you did or didn't do. She's upset because she believed the lies of feminism and thought she was going to find her fulfillment in her career or this, that, or the other. Or you should constantly like take her on these lavish vacations. Now she's upset because she hit 30. Chang Tyrone wouldn't pick her because she's too concerned about her career and she spent her 20s banging around riding the CC. And now she's too old to have kids. Uh, or not very many kids anyway. So, uh, you know, the uh, Beta Bucks Deluxe Male, uh, you know, he got her the consolation prize, and uh, she's all alpha widow now, and she's pining away for all these guys that she always wanted but could never get. So she feels like she's settled, and hence she is not happy. <laughs> this chick can't even regurgitate the right talking points. Vacations and tell her, tell you how pretty she, tell her how pretty she is, even though she's, you know, a hundred pounds heavier and whatever. Like you could have done all that and it wouldn't have mattered because it's, it's within her that's lacking. Right. It's because she's, she's completely unfulfilled because she, she didn't do the filling and she looked to other things and just is completely off track herself. So the men will, beat themselves up and get stuck in that place of blaming themselves too much. And I try to say, no, no, it's, it's really not you. It's really not you. So, And that's a hard hurdle for them to get was, over. Did she ever stop talking? And why is he cutting in? She should just let her keep on woman splaining, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's walking all over you on your own show. It, it seems Sim to me. Well, here's a here's the million dollar question because I think this is what most guys that watch, you know, there's just pearly things. She's very popular. She's a woman that does this, but you know, yeah. she came out on record several years ago saying, oh, "I want to be a YouTuber. It's going to be a business model." You know, she's come out and said, "Hey, I'm going to make a yeah, just like you. You just haven't come out and said that. She's more honest than you are. It's a business for you as well. You don't care about men. Business out of this, but yeah. why why do First, I'll ask you, why do you care? I'm, like, why do you care? Why do you care what strange men that you'll never know and never... You helped your friends. You talked to them. You convinced them. You said, here's my advice. Why is he presupposing she does care? She doesn't care. You don't care either. What made you decide to say, I should put this on the internet and tell everybody? Okay. Try not to get emotional. Because... The men, some of the men that I've talked to, some are family members, some are friends. Mm -hmm. No one was there for them when they were going through this. They somehow made it through the other side and didn't see if they could fly off of a bridge, if you catch my drift. Yep. Uh, they somehow, thank God, made it to the other side. There are so many men who did not. Oh. And I think to myself, I wish I knew then what I know now so I could tell them this. And what I started to realize is that there are so many men out there that are in that situation. I know that still didn't answer what your situation? question. Like, well, why, why tell them? Because I wish somebody else would have told those men that I care about at those times. But nobody was. Nobody did. Well, here come the fake tears. So. That's why. Oh, Nobody was there to tell my dad when he was going through it. And he said, I feel like a failure. I feel like I failed. I feel like I failed at marriage. I, I'm i 50 years old and I have nothing. What a fake. She's so fake. And he had, he had money. 
he had a, a property. He had myself and my sister. Oh, no. But my mom had cheated for the second time. The first time he stayed. Oh. And, you know, it was 27 years of marriage. And she decided to cheat. And he was just completely empty. And I, I saw him. And I was the only one that he had to talk to. And I couldn't recognize at the time the depth of what he was going to going through and of the course. pain that he had. You're a woman. And I'm glad that I was there to talk to him. I went with him to the... I was. Guys, this is why you wouldn't listen to a woman content creator try to tell you as a man how to deal with a world, living in that world as a man. She has no clue. This is so retarded. What... What is she doing here? Why is he having her on? 20, 23 at the time. Um, I went with him to the divorce attorney, which is probably not appropriate, but I did. And um, Is this just a pick-me dance? Is she just a, a pick-me girl? Is this a woman who's now in her mid to late 30s and she has no kids, she has no husband, she has nothing except maybe some cats and a stinky litter box and a box wine and she's trying to fill her time, give her life meaning by helping men and hoping that some men are going to see this and maybe she'll attract a uh, beta male of her own. I, I, like who else? The fact that somebody... Look, 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 look what she did. She's looking down at a script. She's reading the script. <laughs> she got script notes there. Look, look at her eyes. Like my father or like these other men... She's reading. ...are going through this alone right now. I just I just can't... I can't sit by and have that. Oh, I, 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 There's something about me that just can't sit back and be fine with it. Oh, you're so awesome. Well, I, I think that comes from a good place. You, you know, um, me personally, I, I started this channel uh, for various reasons. To make money. The rest is lies. Um, but one of the reasons and one of the big videos that kind of blew up for me that, that went very viral that I ended up taking down when YouTube started squashing channels for certain content yeah. is because I said the F word, I think, a hundred times in the video. But, but because if you've ever watched um, a, a Goodfellas, it's when they were talking about the restaurant. Do you remember that scene in the restaurant where the mob gets yeah, in on the... What's that? Remind me. Okay, so the there's a guy that comes and he says, hey, he wants either a loan or some help from one of the mob bosses. And yeah. uh, he's the, guy, the mob says, I'll help you, but we want to inv be involved with the business. And they bankrupt the business. And when the guy, you know, and the expression is, um, when, uh, when, when money's due or when the mob wants something from you, it's F you pay me. There's no, yeah. there's, there's no, there's no discussion. There's no, uh, negotiation. It's F you pay me. And so yeah. that was what I was relating to he, to him. Here's a guy that yeah. was, was supposed to be given out, you know, 50% or actually a little bit more of his $120,000 salary to a woman that cheated on him, left him, took the kids. And then when he lost his job, he had to pay for her court. Then he loses his job. And then he's working under the table trying to, and they would not adjust it, uh, adjust it down. So, you know, he's going in terrible debt uh, trying to keep up with this. They take his driver's license. And, and in the end, he decides to just step off this globe uh, because of, of the, the court systems saying, fuck, fuck you pay me. And yeah. so now yeah. now the kids don't have a dad. You know, now the kids don't have any money coming in except a little bit from the state, perhaps. And and, and right. it just infuriated me so much. And I said, you know, as I kind of got into this a little, I did that video and and then and several months before and, and after, you know, when I thought about it, I... I and, and I'm not going to go into too much depth. It touched me. Because my viewers know me. But yeah, I, they know you're fake, you're a fraud, you're a phony, you've defrauded them out of a quarter million plus dollars. Where's the men's retreat, mofo? Where is it? It's been three years now, four years. We're still waiting, pal, and you keep making excuses. But you built a bespoke house that cost how much? The exact amount you defrauded people out of? That That's such an interesting dink. Just yeah. said, why is nobody standing up for men, and why is everything we do bad? 
but that's me sticking up. That's me sticking up for me. That's me sticking up for other guys to have. That's you grifting, saying what you think people want to hear so you can get money out of them. Women come out and say, I'm going to stick up with you too, for you too. That's where you get the chameleon. Why are you doing this? And what, well, what, yeah, yeah, like her. She, she's a chameleon. What are you dating her? Is there a relationship going on here between you and this broad? Is that what's going on? Have you got a little under the table action from her? Is that it, pal? I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm looking at your, your YouTube channel. I see how many subscribers you have. And, and I see how many views you get. It's very similar to my little news channel that I do on YouTube now, Odd Man Out News. You're not yeah. paying the bills. You're not paying the bills with this. So, yeah. so it. Oh, uh, she's not making that much money, so she couldn't possibly be a chameleon. That is the most fallacious logic I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, pal, did you ever stop to think that she's hoping she will? You know, channels, they're small. Grifters start a channel like you and hope it grows. But before it grows, that doesn't mean they're not grifting, that they're not disingenuous, that they're not frauds from the get-go, you idiot! I'm starting me a new Ponzi scheme. It's very small. I'm not cheating anybody yet out of their money, uh, but I'm hoping... Oh, well, you know, you don't have any victims yet, so you can't be a, a scam artist. What? Is it, now has it become a point where... Um, <laughs> You feel like you have a community, or is it like yeah. almost like a journal where you vent onto the screen? What is it? Absurd. It's both. I, th I think I definitely vent. I was sharing a story just yesterday uh, of a situation that I have right now that it's, I'm like, it's, it's, there's a woman who's a male lady, and I'm, I'm too small to be a con artist. Don't you know that? Con artists can't be small. They don't start small. <laughs> I'm like, I said to the, the postal worker who's a man, I was like, oh, yeah, that's funny. You expect a woman to be accountable? Anyway, so I shared that little story on YouTube. Well, I'm sure that happened. Oh, mm. But as far as me venting, like, I don't have a struggle. I have female privilege all day long. Yeah. My life. Yeah. If I walk outside and I need help, help is everywhere. Permit. Yeah. It always is. Then why is he enfranchising you? He should be enfranchising a male content creator who needs help because you don't. Government is there for me. You know, it's it's fine. I never started this channel to uh, as a business. And yes, you did. What are you talking? Of course you did. That's what everybody used as says that isn't, oh, I, I want to be seen as uh, altruistic and uh, somebody who's helping the little guy and men need help. Uh, I, I don't want people to think that I'm doing this as a business, even though that's exactly what you're doing. That's what somebody who was doing it as a business would say, that they were. <laughs> never did. You, there's, I've never had a channel before this on ever, any other topic. And there This is what all the frauds do. Right out the gate, you Donovan Sharps, your butters, you... Give me a break. It will never be any other topic because I never was like, I'm going to be a YouTuber, you know. Of course it won't be any other topic. This is a hot topic, yeah? And you've seen how much money women in this space make. Of course you're going to stick to this content, right? Got a lot of simpy, baby male dudes out there that want to believe that there's uh, unicorns, purple unicorns no less, running around out there and they love to hear these broads tell them what they want to hear because it gives them hope. Oh, she's based and red-pilled. She cares about men. That means maybe there's more women out there just like her. Maybe I'll actually have my dream and find a wife and have a family with a Western broad. Yeah. <laughs> Don't count on it. Like, at all. I'm, I, I used to be a horse trainer. Like, I'm a, I'm a crazy horse chick. So, all right, wait a uh, minute. No. Aren't all, all, are all horse women crazy? Yes. It's totally true, and we have that joke. It's not that it makes you crazy. The crazy ones gravitate towards it. Well, I mean, it's, it's very, very... Little self-report there, by the way. Big of you yeah. to admit that you're crazy. I think that's wonderful. Ah, uh, <laughs> look, I have a video that I made talking about that my mom, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure, had borderline personality syndrome, <laughs> disorder syndrome, and... I am pretty sure what I have what I like to refer to as borderline 
light <laughs> because I can just my I can be emotional that way. I don't react. And part of that is because my father's British. <laughs> A very, very. Weird the hell does that mean? A very calm, dry sense. The hell does that? Oh, by the way, borderline. She has person. Of course. Oh, what big, big shocker. So she's got borderline personality disorder as well. But we should believe her. Okay. Yeah. It's a humor, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Well, you, I, I, I love that. Yeah. Uh, you said earlier that you're you're 47. By the way, 47. I was going to say that women that make light of uh, being mentally ill, probably not uh, people you should listen to. And she's 47? 40 she's got a lot of makeup on. Wow, okay. Eh, this looks all right for 47. I wouldn't have guessed she was 47, but um, I bet without the makeup. She got a lot of help. Uh, okay, well, there you go. There you go. A 47-year-old chick with... Mm, okay, looking for meaning in her life, looking for a man. That, that, mm, she's a pick me. Yes. Um, so, married, single, divorced. Tell me single. the life story. Single. No. Never. Single. We should listen to her. <laughs> I love this. Oh wow, she's a decent looking broad at forty seven. So at 30, 25, she was probably hot. She's part of the problem. How does a woman make it to 47 and be a decent looking chick and never be married? She's an effinist. That's how. Yeah, she wants you to believe that she's not part of the problem. Yeah, okay. Never married? Never married, never pregnant. Uh, I say that because I, I don't wanna say, I don't, I don't have any kids because, you know, there's a lot of um, ending of young ones before they joined us here on this planet if you ever had an abortion is he gonna ask that question no yep and because um, he's I a big not, pussy i've done that either um so i i had a high school boyfriend went into college for one year and then he broke up with me i did not break up with him he broke up with her <laughs> She got problems, yo. And that was devastating. And then I was single for a year, mm -hmm. didn't date. And oh, I have to clarify, that actually means for me, that actually means single, single. Because I get like these 304s right. say single, but they don't mean single. I mean, like I didn't go on one date. I didn't, nothing. Yeah, and, like um, not, not just no dates, not hooking up, right. not, right. Yep. No, I've never, yeah, I've never done that. And um, then I, got into a relationship was I then was engaged to that gentleman then I that was let's see why didn't that work out you gonna tell us no so that was like three years engaged is butter gonna ask no to him horrifyingly made the decision to cohabitate which was wrong decision to make on my Why? part Why? and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. uh, in June of 2000 and he broke up with me in July of 2000. I love how she uh, uh, makes tries to make it sound like she the, the implication being he left me because I had MS. How do we know that? Why did he actually leave her? Do you think that was why? I kind of doubt it. And he told my brother-in-law uh, a few months later that I was holding him back and uh, it was because I was sick. Oh, really? And so. I would think that it really hadn't had that much effect on your life up to that point. Actually, uh, it, we only have her word for this, by the way. I'd love to talk to him. It's it's interesting because you you would be right in the way that ms usually goes but it turns out notice when she was talking about that by the way she had a hard time making eye contact with the camera so i'm not so sure i believe her word but anyway that i had actually had it as a child and nobody realized or picked up on it mm -hmm. the fact that i was 
very, like I was very not limber. I don't know the word for not limber, stiff, I guess. Like yeah. I really wasn't limber. I, um, I, I, my balance was, was off. But the thing is, is that, and this plays into why I do what I do too. I, I didn't have a pediatric. By the way, Fatter's getting lazy. He just has guests there. He's too lazy to go into his live streaming program and change the text to whatever the person's name is. See, notice it's not, what is her name, Erin? He didn't put Erin there, it's just guest. So, boy, I get, not only has he gotten fat, but he's gotten lazy, which is why he's probably gotten fat. Nutrition as a child. And the reason is because they never said it, but I have two little brothers who died in infancy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so I think my parents were like, well, we don't need a doctor because they didn't help Mark and Colin. So uh, we don't need a doctor. We don't trust doctors, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it sounds like borderline personality disorder. That's for sure. So they never, if, if they would have taken me to a doctor for some of these issues that I had, which most parents would have, then they would have found out. And so my whole point of saying that is that by the time I was 22 and I had the huge, big, obvious attack where my vision was blurry, like I was legally blind mm -hmm. and um, walking upstairs was really difficult. Who cares? Uh, there were incontinence issues. And I don't know why anybody cares about any of this stuff. Why are we hearing about your incontinence and your MS and your health? How is this in any, any way relevant? I don't care. Why don't you talk about men and men's rights and men's issues? Cause you, oh, because you really don't know anything about any of that stuff, and you only have a very limited amount of talking points that you can regurgitate? Oh, I see. Now, continue then with the uh, minutiae of your life. I will share that because, look, this is no joke, What's what I've dealt with and what's going on here. You know. Yeah, but I don't care. And you're not here to talk about that. And that's what this channel is for. His channel ain't an MS channel. But apparently it is now, and it's also a promote women and a chameleon effinish channel now. Great. What I mean? Yeah. So it was, yes, it was, it was absolutely a, a problem that was a- Yeah, I want to hear about your incontinence. Affecting my life, and especially because he was a horse trainer and I was a horse trainer. So you're, oh, wow. you're both crazy. Well, you're both crazy. Yeah, both crazy for sure. For <laughs> sure, both crazy. Yeah. And, uh absolutely both crazy yeah he was uh, this is why fathers need to be the ones in charge of who their daughters accept sorry my doggy's having respiratory issues no notice when she's saying stuff she doesn't actually believe she's she had a hard time looking at the camera it's not true she started talking about how fathers should be the ones choosing their daughter's mates she can't, she can't look at the camera she's looking away from the camera hmm. no worries but this is why fathers should really be in charge of who uh, uh, yeah, can yeah. get past. Notice she, where she's looking up. Notice where she's looking up. Right. Let, 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 let's see that again. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, so that would be to the left. Yeah, that's what the uh, people do when they lie. They look up to the left. That's uh, them accessing the uh, creative part of their brain so they can make shit up. Yeah, she's a liar. They look to the right when they're accessing truth, left when they're accessing uh, lies. Absolutely. Yeah. A, a problem that was affecting my life, and especially because he was a horse trainer and I was a horse trainer. So you're, you're both crazy. Well, you're both crazy. Yeah, we're both crazy for sure. For <laughs> sure, both crazy. Yeah. And uh, most of the most of the time, she's looking to the left. Absolutely, both crazy. Yep. There you yeah, go. He was, See. This is why fathers need to be the ones in charge of yeah. who their daughters accept. Sorry, my doggy's having respiratory issues. No over worries. Here on the side. Yeah. Her, her baby. But this is why fathers should really be in charge of who uh, yeah, look up left. can get look past the, yeah. the gate right. of, mm -hmm. of, of who should be like really in consideration. She's spinning a yarn. She's looking up to the left. She's spinning a yarn. She's creating a tale, false narrative. Uh, that's what liars do. They look to the left. And for their daughter's, you know, hand in marriage or, or whatever. But, like, that isn't the case and certainly wasn't the case for me because this guy would have never, ever 
made it past, you know, the first test. But, you know. He, now, did your, did your, um, is your father still with us today or did he pass? He did not pass. He is still with us today. Okay. He, uh, I, he I, lives I, in I, Europe. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask a, a, a question that I know just crossed my mind, so it probably crossed others. Did you ever do a DNA test to make sure he's your dad? No, but I look exactly like him. Okay. I, I look exactly like him. So there is no question. Like this is, this is, this is my dad's face. <laughs> like, absolutely. Well, he sounds like a very, he sounds like a very feminine woman or man, but <laughs> you know, tell him just stay away from the makeup. He'll be all right. He's, he's five, six actually too. Oh. So I also get like, Hey, just Stop like with all this, he has to be just like fatter. So she's older. She's almost as old as him. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. There's something going on here. This height and this height and this height. I never knew that was a thing until like maybe five years ago when I started actually watching your content, watching old Kevin Samuel stuff, and going, mm -hmm. "What is this six feet and above?" Uh, yeah, oh, it's uh, that's. I don't know how that started. I think social media and women want to brag. My man is better. And so my man. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. what it is. So it's my man's taller. My man's more athletic. He makes more money. And then it becomes, it, ironically, it becomes a competition of who has the best guys if we're trophies and not, you know, individual it's men. Status. And yeah. I, th I think the thing that makes me laugh the most about it is that um, it, if you, if you look at a woman and you say, man, I, I wish she had a bigger butt or wider hips. They have surgery yeah. for that. I wish she had bigger, smaller right. boobs, surgery, tummy tuck, surge, face, dot, hair. Right. Like a woman is 100% fake. And, and yeah. then they look at men and say, I wish you were taller. And the one thing, the one, look, if you say get hair plugs, I can, I could do it. Could I get jaw implants to have a more masculine jaw? Sure. Could I, I hit the gym or I can do everything. Dude, you ain't hit the gym in a long time. You don't want that big, fat face of yours to be any wider, okay? But the worst thing you can look at it, to, to most men at least, is say, well, I don't like your height, because there's, other than breaking your legs in 15 places and all that, so there's nothing you can do about it. And But it's coming from the women that in the same token, if you said, uh, I, I'm, I'm not into you, you're a little fat for me, they'll say, you're shaming me. Right. You can change your way. I can't change my height. I know. I know. I know. And it, it infuriates me. My sister and I, when we were younger, we used to even joke about, oh, he's too, that's too tall. That seems too tall. Like, like, so the idea of these women are like, he has to be this height. I was like, I don't even understand that. My dad was five, is five, six. And my mom, she has passed, is, was five, four. And I remember, I had this memory of them standing in line to get uh, movie tickets back in the day, you know? And they both had their little hoods up because it was raining out and I was standing back like with my sister and I said, they look like hobbits. They look like little elf people. Well, what are you, 6'3"? Like what are you, 6'3"? Who, me? Yeah. I'm five, I'm five, six and a half. Okay, so well then, how, then really you're me. saying, you really you're saying you look like a hobbit from behind as well then. Yeah, <laughs> you were, but I wasn't saying it as an insult at no, all. No, I, I know, I, was I know. Like, Is this what his channel has become? This is nonsensical, small talk, irrelevancies. Who cares? Your parents look like hobbits? Who is watching this guy? Who is watching this milk toast Tim Pool mofo wannabe? Give me a break. They're so cute. Yep. Like, they're so cute. Look at how cute they are. I would think women you know? would want guys that are close to their height because then when you're, you know, when you're kissing or dancing, you're nose to nose and toes to toes. and yeah, that's... I know. But I think what you said, you're right. I think it's absolutely a status thing. It's like, look at mine. It's sort of like them with their, with their handbags. Like, oh, it's this brand. It's that brand. No, it's evolutionary biology, you idiot. It, 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 it's evolutionary. They want to do this taller than them because if he's taller than them, he's bigger than them. If he's over a certain height, he's a certain size, 
He can see a greater distance. He's larger. Ergo, he's probably stronger. Mass moves mass. And that helped people survive. It's only within a very short period of time that we've been living in a very sophisticated, technologically advanced world where brute strength and size are not what protect us, get things done. And by the way, they still do get things done, by the way. They're just not as important to one's survival as they used to be. But anyway, let's continue. It costs this much, therefore. And basically, they're just saying... I must be better because I have this. Right. And it's like, no, that's not, it's not at all the case. It's, it's just, it's just not. No. And, and it just goes to show you how little women are concerned with what's real. Right. Because how things seem and how things look isn't what's real, but they don't care about that. They only care. Lady, what do you know? You're single at 47, never had a husband, have no kids. <laughs> you don't know anything. How are you going to help men? I don't understand this. How is she helping us? What is she going to do for a man? She's a woman and a dysfunctional one at that. I care about what the other women think. That's it. Yeah, well, it's competition. And That's you. I haven't even thinking about them because the women are thinking about themselves too. You're right, right. Well, now, so it, it's... It about something besides themselves <laughs> so have you spent the last 24 years single since you're since yeah. you're well yeah kind mostly yeah. so she's after a loser. that she's a loser. broke off i thought a couple of things um, um i thought well i'm damaged goods yes yeah, so this is the only attention she could get from men this is just the last it's just trying to fill a void the void in her life where there should be a man, but there's no man because she's a dysfunctional mess suffering from, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, she's got the, uh, the, the, what was it? That personality disorder? But anyway, she's a mess. She's mentally ill. So this is just to get attention and validation from men. Last ditch attempt also to maybe possibly get herself a man. That's not going to happen though. <laughs> you think she would settle for Joker? No. He's too short because my body count is now at two. And so that's just- 47 and she's got a body count at two. Did anybody out there believe that? I don't know that I believe that. Give me a break. Terrible, like <laughs> I'm I'm just disgusting. I really thought this, I thought this is disgusting and I had no girlfriends. I, I didn't, my one friend in college that was like my roommate, she was my only friend in college. Like I didn't go and meet other people. I don't know what's wrong with me, wrong with me in that way. Like I'm just, I've never been super social. So I was never like, I need more friends. I need to go places. I, I studied and I went places with my friend and she didn't ever date anybody in college or hook up or go to parties or anything like that. Neither one of us did. We rode our horses and we went home every weekend and we took extra classes and stuff like that. So, um, I never had the girlfriends to know what the other chicks were doing. So at two, I thought, well, and I was thinking of it from, you know, the way God would, would like, I, yeah, I'm. You mean the Christian that doesn't go to church? <laughs> I only wanted to have one and I wanted that to be my husband and stupid me. I, you know, did it before I was married and then he broke up with me. Well, crap. Right. And now he's two. So I was like, uh... okay, the plus I've got this MS thing, and because mm -hmm. of how the second guy reacted, I mistakenly thought this is how most men would see me, that I was not, not fit to be a wife. And I believe that about myself. I'm not. Well, it's not because I have borderline personality disorder, and I'm a mess, and I'm mentally ill, and I'm just a disaster of a human being. Oh, no, I have MS, and so I didn't put myself out there, you see? So that's why I'm single. Yeah, a bunch of crap not fit to be a wife what can i possibly contribute to their life what value can i bring which i realize now <laughs> with everything i've learned i was like oh boy what no other women were thinking about what value do i bring but i was well like, let me I, I value oh, to bring. let me she's just a pick me let me uh, i'm Feel free to say no to these questions. Just Here we go. Say, I won't answer that one, and, and I'll hop. Here we go to the pandering. Now we're going to get to the pandering, and he's going to show us what a blue pill beta simpy actually is. Let's go. Let's go, butter boy. From one day to the other. Do you know how to cook? 
I do. Do you yeah. keep a clean home? Here we go. I do. I'm okay. very, uh, well, I had a, a person tell me once, she said, oh, you're very much a, a, everything in its place and a place for everything. That's that's a little OCD. That's I, I'm kind of the yeah. same. I'm kind of the same way in some ways. I so I, a little, I told you I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Fatter hoping to get some? I think that's what's going on here. Are you hoping to get a piece, Fatter? I, I do. Yeah, it's very much that way. But I, I don't I don't yell at other people. Oh, but he's not a slave to his loins anymore, even though he's almost as old as me. Pathetic. For, for being that way. I was raised to be that way. I was raised to be neat and tidy. My father's mm. British. Right. So she's a perfect woman. Who's alone at forty-seven and has never been married and never been engaged? Has she been? Was she engaged? She, okay, she was engaged, but uh, she says he left him because of the MS. We only have her word for that. Neat and tidy, and after you clean your room, my dad would say, "All right, there'll be inspections." <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know. So, well, see, now I know many a guy that would that would be perfectly happy if if uh, you kept a home that clean. Um, I, right. uh, I'll, I'll try to phrase this politely. Um, even with your current struggles with MS, would you still be able to satisfy a husband in the bedroom? If, if uh, I'm not talking about swinging around on trapezes and doing, you know, yoga spins things. Would you still be able to be present and there and participating and enjoy it? Yes. Okay. I think so. Now, it's I've been celibate for 24 years, so. Well, uh, the reason why I I would imagine. Does anybody believe that? Do you think that's true? I mean, if it's true, she's got real problems, okay? Real problems. Real problems with intimacy. Real problems with other human beings. Just lots and lots of problems, okay? This is not somebody you're going to go to to get perspective on relationships. <laughs> or male-female dynamics or much of anything, really. Her life sounds like a total, complete disaster. <laughs> well, well, the reason why I mention this is because uh, if, if you are in a position where you would like to be with somebody... Be with me! You loser. You have all the opportunity in the world to be with somebody. There are plenty of... What are you talking about, Chunko? What are you talking about, Butter Boy? She's 47. Oh, well, she only got a body count of two. Yeah, because she's got borderline personality disorder, yo. Anybody out there knows what that is? If you don't, go look it up. She's a mess. And a body count of two, she's been selling for 24 years. Any be anybody believe that cockamamie BS? Oh, uh, he left me because I had MS. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. I, that sounds like cope on her part, okay? Don't complete cope. <laughs> Men that would be happy to have somebody that, you know, I, yes, you can. I, I think the... 47-year-old spinster with borderline personality disorder. Yeah, ooh, she's a catch. The body count thing is, I've always put it in one of two ways. If you're a woman that married a, a military soldier and you had his two children and he goes overseas and dies, well, technically you're a single mom of two. Right. Yeah, but the way that you became a single mom was different. The circumstances are different. Circumstances matter. If you go out and you go to the clubs and you let raw guys raw dog you in the bathroom, and you do that for a couple of years and you have two kids, you're technically a single mom with kids. There's a whole world of difference between all of it. At the tender age What's of- What's your point? Of four, What's his point? 47, <laughs> you, you have less bodies than a woodshop teacher on one hand. Yeah, but what are the circumstances around that lack of bodies? It doesn't make sense. There's a reason and it's not good. She's already told you she's got borderline personality disorder. Cue ball. Use your brain. This woman's got tons of red flags. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just the fact that she's 47 and single, no kids, never been married, 
means there's a reason why and it's not good. Because if she was a catch, if she was great and wonderful, she would have been scooped up. But something about her stopped her from getting scooped up. What? She's a head case, you idiot. You see what I'm saying? So yes. I, I might say to you. And he sounds desperate as F. Because one of the things I do you know, is I try to help guys. But I'm. Right. Yeah. Well, why don't you help them by asking some actual tough questions instead of kissing her butt? And tiptoeing around on walking on eggshells and not challenging her at all. Now we see the real butter. He's a wimp. I might yeah. say to you, stop being so hard on yourself. Because <laughs> in the current world that we're in now, <laughs> you know, with fem- Where is she being hard on herself? She's single at 47. I think the problem is that nobody's been hard on her. That's the problem. Including herself. Feminism and all the other craziness. To some guys, you would be an absolute gold mine. Beta males, simps, losers like you, sure. Physical challenges and all, sure. But, you know, we've all got, as you say, we've all got something. Now, depending on the crazy part, depending on how, how crazy you are. I don't care. What does she have to offer? I, I mean, she's 47. Her womb is as, is as barren and dry as the Arizona desert. What, what does she have to offer? Mental illness? When you go crazy... But, but I might say, I might say you, you in the last 24 years um, have learned enough at least to know probably what you would look for in a guy. I might say not being... She hasn't dated. <laughs> she could sell it, but she hasn't dated. He even said she hadn't dated. So hard on yourself either. You know, I'm sure right. you would give that advice if I said, you know... She probably has ridiculously high standards because of those first two guys she was with. One of them, the first one may be... I don't know. Who know? I, I don't know, man. What's going on with this broad? But it's nothing good. You know, this woman hurt me. This woman hurt me. Uh, it's been 24 years that I'm single. I think you that's a presupposition. It's a logical fallacy. Why would you assume that because she's been single for 24 years that she would somehow know more about what she wants in a man? Why would you assume that? If she knew that, wouldn't she logically then would it be stand the reason that she would go out and find that if she knew what she was looking for wouldn't she go find it wouldn't it make it easier to find it unless of course she's not actually looking which is what i believe is the case and she's not been looking because she's got a whole ton of issues yo <laughs> you'd probably say well get out there there's lots of women that would appreciate you or or etc cetera, etc cetera. i might say the same thing to you so what is uh, trying to intimate that he's interested yeah that's all this is uh fatter butter bachelor here is looking to get laid okay and he's promoting her in the hope that he's gonna get at least a hand job maybe more <laughs> and of course she's taking advantage of his simpiness to promote her channel oh but it's not about money <laughs> keeps you from doing it because it's not just the ms thing it's not right. just the, I've, I've got this devastating body count of two, because that's not how this works. So what is it right. that's really keeping you from... Not how what works. What are you talking about? How does her not having a high body count mean anything about her being a catch? That's not the only thing that's in consideration. I haven't heard any virtues, by the way. What are her values? What are her virtues? I haven't heard any. I just heard her wax on about how her parents are, look like hobbits from behind, and she has incontinence. Well, this is definitely not something I want to share, uh -huh. but uh, mm. I will tell you. Then you wouldn't share it. You. So don't share this in the video. Okay, hold on. Let, me hit, let me hit pause. Let me hit pause okay. on the recording. Yeah. Okay, you, you guys can't hear that. That was a very secret, a top secret conversation. Uh -huh. Um. But in, in one of the things that you mentioned there, you mentioned MGTOW, right? Mm -hmm. Guys mm -hmm. going their own way doesn't mean I don't date. It doesn't mean I'm not interested in women or sleeping with them or, or even I don't seriously date somebody. For Because right. this is, I think, a, a mistake a lot of people make. A man going his own way 
is just a man on his path and his life with his purpose. And yes. you're allowed to tag along. You can come with. It doesn't mean that you're not part of the train, but that guy's going right. in his direction, right? So. Right. But it's different things. That's Some guys. It's called men going their own way, not men and women going their own way. Or, or not men and women going with him their own way. Oh, God. Guys, when they go their own, because it's a kind of a philosophy. No, it's not. It's an ideology. It's not a philosophy. Ideology comes from philosophy. Ideology, ideas. But philosophy does not come from ideology. It's not a philosophy. You're an idiot. And I'm sure you know this, but... Philosophy is a tool of the mind for better understanding reality. MGTOW is in and of itself a set of ideas. It's an ideology. You idiot. You fat idiot. But I'll, I'll put this out there again for anybody that doesn't. It's a philosophy. So some guys no, say, it's not. Well, my own way, I, I don't need friends. I don't need relationships. I don't need women. I'd rather join. That's not what philosophy is. I just told you what it is. Moron. And Galt, go out in the woods and disappear from everybody. There's there that, that extremes. And then there's men that say, well, I am married. I have kids, but she knows it's my way or the highway. I have the prenup. That's not MGTOW. Sorry. That's not MGTOW. Milk toast. Fence sitter mofo. MGTOW dudes don't get married. It's that simple. It's my way or the highway. No, in the end, he really has no power. Because if she wants to leave and take all his stuff and take his house and take the kids and get alimony and get child support and whatever else she wants, and he'll be living in a shoebox, and eventually he's going to self-delete. Uh, that's not a man going his own way. We have the agreement. And, right. and it was like this before we got married, and she agreed to it. And she didn't. Oh, well, that's perfectly enforceable under the law, then. <laughs> get caught up in the feminism. And so the because really, if you think about it, a traditional, very traditional family is a MGTOW family. The man. Go what? Oh, my God. I know this guy is trying to appeal to as many people as humanly possible so he can make as much money and grift as much as he possibly can. Dude, no, that's not MGTOW. It's not. That's a MGTOW family. <laughs> this guy is such a moron. Absolutely. The man goes to work. He does whatever job he determines is best for the family. He does everything that's right for the family. And they're in Absolutely. a, you know, they're in a train following his engine. Well, that's really what MGTOW yeah. is. No, it's that's not. That's really men going Absolutely. their own way. No, it's not. Oh, that's, oh yeah, it, it's not those extremists that don't want anything to do with Western women. They're extremists from his own mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> Idiot. Ah. She should join his agenda. Right. The wife joins the husband on his path and his agenda. And that is what, what I believe is right. If she's trying to net herself a husband. No, that's not MGTOW. These people like this guy, fat bachelor and this grifter chameleon chick are just trying to co-opt MGTOW and the ideas contained within and rebrand. Well, at the same time, I, I want to keep all the uh, old followers I had, but then I want some new followers as well. I'm going to rebrand it so it doesn't sound as uh, right-wing and goofy and extreme and our appeal. No, you could be married and have a family and be a man going your own way. Yeah, well, it, it, it's singular, right? Man going his own way. Well, how, how does that include a wife and kids, you idiot? <laughs> Oh, the acronym is M-G-T-O-W. Where are these other letters? And so, yeah, it's it's about that. It's about that. And it's about, oh, it's about you know, kids. This, oh, this world. It's about kids and a family. That's M-G-T-O-W now. Let's make that. Oh, okay. Puts every, I say this world, what? I call them the overlords. Right. The ones that are anti-nuclear family. You mean the powers to be, the global bankers? 
people you know nothing about because you're just regurgitating talking points and you've never done any actual research into this stuff, same as fatter? They throw everything possible in the path. Including yeah, you want to tell us why they do that? You want to tell us the reasons behind that? You want to get into the actual root causes and not just talk about the symptoms? which are just distractions. No, 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 no. You don't want to do any of that because then you would actually get demonetized and shadow banned and algorithmically suppressed and you wouldn't make all that moolah you're hoping to get by having him promote you. Feminism's giant, one of those um, blockades. Right. In the path of men and women coming together in the way that we're supposed to. Do you know why that is? And the way... Well, let's hear it, Fatter. The state is not powerful when the family is powerful and the man leads the leads that family he's not serving the state and thinking about serving the state he's thinking about serving his family and his family's you know the wife is serving her children and her husband and it's the state is not powerful right in that scenario yeah the- uh, if if you have more to add to that. I'm I'm happy to learn no i i agree i i would say the the family is the basis of community community is the basis or or the structure kind of combined with church so if you because yeah. traditionally if you looked you had family you had um a community you had church and right. and that was the small town and that small town yeah. if you if you go look at old westerns right it was people yeah. from the outside coming in in the small town at first struggling with yes. it and then they overcome because everybody came together yeah. as a unit well that's yeah. why if you look at absolutely Right. And so if you look at East Tennessee and if you look at West North Carolina right now, they're screaming at FEMA's not mm-hmm. doing anything. But the, yeah. the now we're on FEMA and hurricanes. I thought you were talking about the underlying root causes. The communities have come together. The communities are right. are strong that the people are relying on each other. Right. And all that does is go. I guarantee you, everybody that's going through this, at least the vast majority of them are going to say, you know what? I love my neighbor no more. I love the people around me more. I love this community more. I hate the government more. And that's why yes. FEMA wants to intercede and gum up the works yes. and come in and take over control just so they they make the person see the state or the, the feds as big as their savior. And why does he have her screen still open? This is just him promoting her. Is she paying you? Is she paying you to promote her? Are you getting something out of this butter? Why are you promoting women on your channel when you should be promoting men? If he's going to promote other content producers, it should be other men in the manosphere. Men know a hell of a lot better what men need and how to help their fellow men than some broad. Not the average mom and dad and neighbor. Absolutely. I, my family, my mother told me this. That's the amazing- Yeah, it, it, you, you only scratched the surface, Pinhead, okay? You didn't get anywhere near the root causes. Nowhere near the why. American side of my family from the South. So, um, and I think those roots are stronger uh, in the South and on the East Coast. But, um, but that's a side note. There's a, a st- it's about power, it's about control, it's about centralization, it's about a depopulation agenda. He doesn't know anything at all. Story in my family history where there was um, somebody's farm got taken by the government. Something about like past taxes or something. I don't care. Some BS, right? And the, the the town got together, family and the community, actual community, when it, that actually meant something, and they bought the property at auction. And, and then gave it back. Absolutely, absolutely gave it back, yeah, that's right. I, I had heard that, that story. As you government, we don't, we don't see your authority here. We're taking that, this, these are our people. And that's, that's what we really are supposed to be about. But there's so many things that get in the way of that, including no fault divorce and making it so easy to break up marriages, but also making it so that people don't even 
want to get married anymore. It's not safe for men to get married anymore. Women are- Yeah, but they're still doing it. <laughs> are, you know, in college and focusing on career. So it's all of that. Um, not only that, but this whole idea of a career, the whole idea of you're gonna go and you're gonna work for this person that more you talking don't know, points. that doesn't care about you, that doesn't know. This is just more regurgitated talking points. Neither one of these people has anything original to say. No, he doesn't know your family. That idea, actually it was, um, what is that guy? Christopher McCandless, the, that one, the one man they made a, a story, uh, a book was written and a movie called Into the Wild. He kind of went, he kind of ditched his family. I mean, went he, he went, his, he oh, went John Galt. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So killed him, but so still, he said, he said, he said, a career is a 20th century invention and I don't want one. And I think that's brilliant. And it's, it is a 20th it's a 20th century invention for women, not for men. <laughs> men have to work. You have to produce, you commie, pinko, scumbag, effinist, chameleon, you. 20th century invention. It's an invention actually after the um, Industrial Revolution. What do you think? We're going to go back to milking cows and hand growing corn? Really hit its stride here. In the, in the United States because factories needed workers. Yeah, the world changed. The ways that we produce goods and offer services changed. Careers have always existed, you idiot. <laughs> what are you talking about? We just call them jobs. But there were various careers and professions and we had artisans. Now we just have the division of labor, so there's more careers, more jobs, but there's always been careers. What is she talking about? She's a moron. Slaves, basically wage slaves, and they said, what? oh. What? what do you mean wage slaves? They're working for a wage, but they were slaves. What? Oh God, I'll tell you, she's a commie. Well, if you leave your family farm or your little trade in your small town, you don't need to be the town blacksmith anymore or whatever. Come work for this factory, it's the right- uh, By the way, the blacksmith, uh, that was a career also. What are you talking about? Right thing to do for your family. You'll have money and you can take it home and it's it's a definite, you don't have to worry about your crops or this or that or the other. So, you know, they did that. It's, I don't think it's supposed to be that way at all. I think- What? The, the family, it's supposed to be more like Little House on the Prairie. How the hell are you gonna support eight billion people with that kind of world? I'm sorry, the Amish do a pretty good job growing food, I'll give you that, but they don't have the advanced kind of agriculture you're talking about to feed 8 billion people. But maybe they got enough to feed 500 million if we go to your way of agriculture, which is the depopulation agenda that the global elites have, and that's the population that they want, and that's what this chick wants, and that's what Fatter wants, and those are the masters they're serving. These two are controlled opposition shills, useful idiots. And I think that the, the man, you know, helps raise the family crops and hunts for the food, fishes. What? You should put no thought into this. Little House on the Prairie. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what have you is there a lot of the time to... Why isn't he challenging her on this? You can't support the global population by going out and hunting deer and growing your own corn? Protect uh, his wife and children, multiple children, and the wife is there. None of this... Housewife, soft life, 1950s baloney. Right. That's not Brad life. No, no. You grow a garden. You take care of your family what? when they're sick. I mean, you, you can't feed a family on a garden, sweetheart, unless they're vegetarians. And the amount of people we have in the world, you wouldn't be able to come close to feeding them the amount of protein they need just off of hunting. You try to do that, all the game are going to be dead in a month. And there'll be no meat. What is she talking about? It's only modern agriculture and technology that has allowed us to feed all these people and grow our population, you idiot. Take care of them. Like, garlic is a great antibiotic. You don't need amoxicillin. Anyway, you should, there's, from sun up to sundown, or past that. Garlic. There's plenty of things to be doing. As he's having morons like this on his channel. Because he's enamored by her.
and he wants to bang her. It's the only explanation I can come up with as to why he would have someone this stupid on his show. <laughs> your husband's health me help me, and that's what the woman should be doing. Well, if you think about, if you go back that's to. How yeah, go back to the, you know, 1800s, even early 1900s out on the farm. The, the yes. husband works the field. The, the, yes. the, the wife works the home. Yeah, the only problem was that one out of seven crops failed. Hail, droughts, <laughs> lightning strikes, your crops burn down. Oh, yeah, let's go back to that uncertainty. Oh, boy, where technology is so poor that 98% of people have to be farmers. Lovely. The kids support in whatever way. And they really, the only other interaction you have is going into town and, and bartering, trading, buying, selling with other people yeah. that maybe do different things. And, and I saw this still today when I went to Peru. I went to Peru and I was in um, uh, many different cities. And I forget the name of the, the little, little town I was in. Um, I was only there a few days. Um, and But then we hiked up into the mountains. And one of the things we saw when we were up in the mountains, because I was talking to, to the guide that was, and it was about an 80 kilometer trek uh, in about five days. So we were we were hiking pretty good clips. And we yeah. we stayed the night at one place. And the, the guide uh, was, he spoke Spanish, but as well as, I forget the name of their language, but there's a language that's Peruvian. It comes from okay. kind of like in Incan times that came forward. Right. And he said, sure. he said, this farmer will have maybe cattle, milk, maybe pigs. That farmer might grow coffee, bananas, something. And they don't even use cash. They just trade their goods between. They had, they had just gotten electricity, uh. I think he said a couple months ago. And this is a couple years ago. So you're in the 2020s almost with no electricity. Yeah. And... Yeah. The youngest husband-wife com A couple years ago was 2022, Pinhead, so that's well into the 2020s. combo you saw was about 14, 15, where 14-year-olds yeah. and 15-year-olds were married, and they were having babies. You know, it was, it was very much... And underneath one roof... Yeah, and they got a life expectancy of 40. <laughs> that was I'm probably... What's that? I said, I'm fine with that. Well, it's going back. Yeah, she's fine with that. Yeah, somebody that makes her living, gets her meaning from life, her purpose, online, through technology, fatter, makes his living online, with technology. Oh, I'm sure they'd be fine with that. Whoa, yeah. Back to um, um, almost, well, it's almost like rewinding time. But but the, the thing that fascinated me the most is that the you had... That there was 15 and then the next age like their parents were 30 and their parents were 45 and their parents were 60 and their parents were, and that's why all of a sudden you realize in one and it was in one household a pretty big when i say pretty big like 50 foot by 50 foot building and it was just yeah. you know cement blocks and a very why don't you go do that if you think that's so great you could go do that right now butter boy go do that no he don't want to do that nobody else wants to do that either not in the west i don't want to a very rudimentary roof but we were camped outside there and yes. what you would hear at night was them singing play someone was playing guitar and they were singing and laughing and it was just a a building full of love and they didn't <laughs> have and and i was saying here we are with our laptops and our fancy computers and our phones and our social media and and i don't know if i if i've ever met anybody family wise that was as happy as as those four generations under one roof. Well, you're a slave to te your technology. You couldn't you couldn't leave it if you wanted to, right? It was just, yeah. and and I think when people think traditional, they think, oh, I want it to be like, you know, uh, like my parents, where the wife cooked and the husband. But I I think it was even better before then. Oh, yeah, because it's technology that's the problem. It's not the people and the messaging that is being delivered uh, for a desired end depopulation goal. No, no, no. It's not that. No, no, no. You got to go back. Right yes. But it's never coming back, if you're here at least. Now, maybe if you moved well, out to the mountains of Peru. 
game. But, the only way it's coming back is if we have an SHTF situation. Yep. The grid goes down, all that, and we start over. Well, like, the literally. We're not rolling this back. Right. You know, like, there's no way I can't get on the internet. There aren't, there isn't a number of videos I can make talking about how it was better back then and everyone's just going to agree and here we go. No, because you know why? Because the state won't allow it. Right. Because that family does not answer to any government. They don't deal in fiat currency. They don't worry about, what are you going to do? You can't pay taxes when you're trading your eggs for that guy's bacon. Right. Believe me, honey, you don't want to go to a barter system, okay? Trust me. Uh-oh, I guess you're not a slave to the government anymore. And I really, look, I think it was Bob Marley, and it's not really me. Notice they haven't even talked about taxes. <laughs> and over was a tax chattel. See, she doesn't know anything. To quote him, but I think he said all governments are illegal. Pretty much, pretty much. Now, what, what See, part of the... No, no, they're not. They make the laws. They didn't make a law that made them illegal. What, what are you talking about? Maybe you could argue they're immoral, immoral okay? <laughs> Maybe you could argue that they're unethical based on whatever ethical system that you may follow, but um, no, they're not illegal. What are you talking about? That's a, that, that's a, I love how she's trying to sound intelligent. The combo to say- I'm gonna quote Bob Marty. Oh, I'm so smart. Well, how can you be red pill content, but like, what about all this political stuff? I'm like, cause there is no difference. At a certain point, like, you, you can disregard politics. Yeah, but these two don't know very much about politics. They're just glancing over the surface. It will net disregard you. Now, now, where in the country do you, uh, or where in the globe do you live? I'm ballpark. I, you don't have to tell me city, but like state no, or where. I live in the southern United States. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. if, whether, if you're, uh, now, again, you don't have to clarify, but yeah, if anywhere from pretty much Florida over to, te to Texas, and up to, I'd say, probably South Carolina and Tennessee's, you're seeing a lot more people that are starting to do the pushback against federal government, um, against, I mean. Not really. Not only just in their outlook on life, but how they actually live. No, they're not. Government just keeps getting bigger. What are you talking about? And yes. I, I think there's going to be a, a the, the, the bipolar split of the country is just gonna get stronger. I think more of the weirdo feminist lefties are going to be in California and New York. Um, I, uh, there, there was a survey done or a study done, and um, they, they contacted, because there was like 300,000 people that moved to, let's say, Tennessee in the last, I don't know, year or two because of the COVID thing. And they came from New York and some of these other areas. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. I, I was in California in 2020. Okay. So... And so, they, they did a... Because of that, but I'm definitely aware. I, politics is my hobby. Uh, like, yeah, keeping, yeah. keeping up... Yeah, hobby. A woman into politics as a hobby. Don't listen to women about politics, people. Up with all the politics and all that stuff is my hobby. So, yeah, I'm aware of it. Well, in, te of in Tennessee, <laughs> in Tennessee, they um, reached out and surveyed many of the people that had relocated here many? within the last... I want to say one or two years. Most? 80, no. 80 or 85% of them were conservative. So even though they were fleeing from the blue states, it was the conservatives that said, I'm, I'm done with this. Like, I'm out. I'm out. Mm -hmm. And, right. and, the, yeah, and they, they flee to the conservative states. So, sure I, yeah, so do the liberals, by the way. But the liberals are extremely lacking in self-awareness. They don't know why their states, their cities are going to hell in a handbasket. So they bring their politics with them and they change that state blue. Texas is bordering already on becoming blue, if not already blue. So what the hell are you talking about? Oh, the country's going to have this bipolar split. No, it's not. And by the way, it's all about who's counting the votes, my friend. So you can talk about all of these irrelevancies all day. Whoa, this state's getting more red. This one's getting more blue. Oh, but more people are getting fed up with the government. Doesn't matter. It's all about who counts the votes, you idiot. <laughs> I think, you know, the, I think the Texas to Florida to maybe Southern Carolina. The bottom line is that the powers that be are in control of who becomes president. And whoever wins, it's because they wanted them to. Are you kidding?
You think the people are deciding who's in charge? Who's in positions of power? No, not the people, people. Not the people that are voting. Not the regular citizens. The big global elite bankers, yo, they're deciding. Line is over to ten. I love this white pill nonsense. You're just distracting people. You're distracting them. And you're making them think that there's hope or there's no hope. And then nothing changes. But that's why idiot, useful, sheeple, idiot, morons like you exist. See, and, and, and maybe, maybe there's a couple more states branching up that you could include in that. But I think there's, there's more. It's going to just keep getting redder and redder. And I, yes. I think at a certain point, Bullshit. depending on who's in off, changes nothing. As long as you got 99% of the votes counted and, oh, it's 11 o'clock and we were supposed to stop the vote at midnight, but you know what? We just found another million votes that just appeared out of nowhere. We need another couple days to count them. Oh, all of a sudden, this guy was a shoe in but now he's way behind. <laughs> the Democrat candidate just pulled it out in the last hour, that last 1%, 99% of those votes for... for for, for him. Imagine that. <laughs> Idiots. This, you know, if, if Trump makes it in, and I, I won't go down the politics train too far here, but if, you know, if Trump makes it into office, you're going to see states like New York and California and Oregon, and you're going to see them saying, we don't want to be part of this union anymore. Oh, and I then you see him. someone like Kamala getting in, and you're going to see people in Florida and Texas, and we don't want to be in the union because it, the, the, the pendulum is swinging so violently and so hard now because, you know, Democrat versus Republican used to be this much. And now yeah. you're... There are no Democrats or Republicans. They're all the same party, dude. There's a handful of real, genuine politicians, meaning people who care about the country and are not bought and paid for, who can't be bought and paid for. The rest are all bought and paid for. You're swinging that people are getting flung off the, the, what's the best way? People are getting flung out into where everybody says, just leave me alone, please. There's gonna yes. be a lot more independence and people that just say, no. I, I'm kind of done with this craziness. And that's yes. why I think, I think that is actually going to grow more where people don't say I'm, I'm Republican or I'm Democrat or I'm, I'm left or I'm right. I'm leave me the hell alone. Right. And maybe I'll vote for you if you've got some good ideas. But I don't right. trust either party. I don't trust the feds. Right. I don't trust big government. No, there Who are there's two sides of the same bird. Yep. They all work for the same dang people. You notice during COVID, you notice during any war, it's always, wow, we, oh, Democrats say this. You mean the military industrial complex? She doesn't even know. She Oh, those same people, what people? You can't name them because you're ignorant. Republicans say this, but then all of a sudden there's a war and we agree. Right. Nobody ever talks about, let's dismantle uh, the Federal Reserve. Nobody talks about that. Well, that's weird. Yeah. You know, well, it's because they all work for the same dang people. Right. Bankers, Rothschilds. You know, and there are people that we don't know their names and we'll never know their names. A certain specific race of individuals that we're not allowed to talk about. 90-plus uh, percent of the people in positions of power and authority and influence uh, in entertainment and banking just happen to be part of this group that I am not allowed to name. You mean them? They're so rich that they don't even deal in money. We'll never know their names. We might know Rothschild. We might know Rockefeller. We might know, you know, what, Morgan Chase. Well, so you know some of their names. Why don't you start talking about some of the investment companies? You're too stupid to even know about that, right? Too stupid to know about BlackRock. You're too stupid to know about these investment companies that uh, BlackRock itself has got 10 trillion in assets. Uh, uh, Silver Street, is it? Um, uh, they're just a handful of these control the majority of assets in America and have the largest share investment in all of the biggest companies in America. Small ones, too. As long as they have shares available, these investment companies control those businesses. And guess where they get their money? You! Pension funds! The government! <laughs> Whatever. But there's people that are so powerful that we don't know their names and entities. And 
we kind of understand the World Economic Forum, but I think it's even bigger than that. Yeah, but you don't know. And I know. think it's been going on for a long time. And I mean, I've said. Look into the Bohemian Grove. Eh? I just need that tinfoil hat permanently affixed to my head. And people can can say that all they want, but they just need to know that they were propagandized into saying that because the government came up with that whole conspiracy theorist term right after they JFK. Right. Yeah. And they said, oh, those are conspiracy theorists if they don't believe what the Warren Commission says about that JFK situation. I'm like, no, no, you did it. You're lying about it. And you want to, you know, say that all these people who disagree with your narrative are conspiracy theorists. And it's it's no different. Thankfully, when I was growing up, my parents were like, oh, yeah, they say Lee Harvey Oswald did it, but it clearly wasn't. And I and I learned that as a child. Then I went to high school, I opened up the history book, and it says Lee Harvey Oswald, you know, ended JFK. And, and they never talk and about, I, they never talk how he was a patsy. They never talk about anything else. No, no, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I'm in high school, and I'm like, they're saying this like it's a fact? And I was just shocked. Because my parents were never that way. Like, we just believe what the news says. I mean, it was still too much. I still it's just a regurgitation of talking points. Still voted for Barack Obama two times, and I'm like, good God. So I was still brainwashed for a long period of time. She voted for Obama. We should listen to you. But there were certain things where I was like, no, you can't trust what they say. They're protecting themselves. Right. So I learned about this whole conspiracy theorist. Like I have said, I did not need the 2020 situation to learn that Big Pharma was evil and all about, you know, money. I learned that going through the whole MS thing and all the meds they want to push on you with that. I, I learned that it's you're a, you're a you're not a patient, you're a customer. Right. So yeah. thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, with the red pill stuff and understanding who the real enemy is, and that is the state, it wasn't such a huge jump. No, it's not the state. I mean, they're an enemy, but they're just puppets of the actual enemy. <laughs> to get there. So my eyes were already opened to question the narrative and question who wants you to think this way. Yep. And that kind of thing. And to understand feminism has never been what they told us it was. Right. Never. Well, ironically, ironically for me, I was very much not into politics. And you're still not okay, cue ball. And it it was it was it had nothing to do with Trump about the fake news. Had nothing to do with yeah. Trump about that. What I noticed mm -hmm. was I noticed the media constantly having negative ways to spin everything against men. And constantly having ways to positively prop up women, even if they were horrible. And yeah. and then I see the you know the commercials, the movies, the TV shows, the the bumbling dads, the clever smart moms, and yeah. I realized this is all irrelevant. By the way, who cares? You're just stating the obvious. These are all distractions. These are not the problems. Okay. These are not the problems. That's really what got me into not trusting media. And then when I started seeing media's lies about politicians out there, that's what made me realize, oh, so all yeah. of it's a lie. All of it is a narrative. All of, And that's really what dragged me, ironically, into politics even more. So in, in many ways, I think it's the same for both of us. It was red pill yeah. shows you the truth of many things. And once you know yeah. those to be truths, then you can see the lies. Red pill is just a packet of information. It, it, it's just some information that happens to be true in regards to the relations between men and women and some of the biases that exist within government and the judicial, the, uh, 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 you know, apparatus and the state and why they treat men and women the way they do. The media. And once you see the lies of the media, everything they lie about is right there yep. you can't not see it you see it in everything i can't watch like i can't watch 
any, you know, movies or television or anything without seeing the propaganda. Yep. Like I just, even in older things where I was like, oh, you know, this is kind of before. Now I'm like, there was no before. I don't think any of it was ever intended to be just purely entertainment. I don't think that that was ever the the reason we've had movies or or music or anything like that. I think it's always been for propaganda purposes. And I think the primarily primary target has always been women. And the reason for that is because we are more susceptible. Ah, but- Actually, this came, up, this came up on my, from my video. This is nothing incredibly profound, by the way. The last night that I did, and in the chat, I said, I, I fully believe that women are more men. Propaganda or lies, by the way. Was uh, I Love Lucy a lie? <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. Valuable. I am in possession. It's a hell of a lot more accurate portrayal of the way women actually are than uh, the stuff you see today, where women are geniuses and the men are portrayed as uh, Lucy, uh, morons, essentially. Sadly, of a woman brain. So I know that we are more malleable. And it's obvious if you have eyeballs, you can see it. But- Was Leave it to Beaver propaganda? Was that not entertaining? I don't know. I used to watch reruns of that as a kid. That was propaganda, huh? Mm, okay. Why would God make us this way? Well, because it, and I know feminists, I can hear them screaming, but it, because it makes us, we can be personalized for our husbands. Correct. We can be raised to a certain level by our fathers to have good character, principles, you know, so that we can know what's right and what's wrong but then married to our husband and he can then say here's here's kind of the way i'd like a wife to be and what? i had somebody misunderstand in the chat and say well i don't want her to have the same hobbies as me and i was no. like oh no that's not what i mean it's more like well the type of food and the type of just the way you go about like every man is going to have his own personality and right. so the woman needs to um conform to that to make it um a, a better union what the hell is she talking about you're an idiot that's not how it works that's not how relationships work of course i'm not surprised that this woman doesn't know how they work she's never really been in a real one and she's been celibate by her own words for 24 years and she has uh uh what, 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 that that personality disorder no your share virtues and your share values. It's not supposed to be an act. You're not supposed to be conforming to the virtues and the values of your husband. You both start out having the same ones, then there's no conforming necessary. What are you talking about? She doesn't know what she's talking about. Don't listen to this broad. This is why you men out there don't listen to broads about relationships. And the, the, women are the ones that are malleable, and I think that's the purpose for it. The way I would express... Women are more open and susceptible to social pressures because of evolution uh, the way i would ext- explain it is mm-hmm. you can buy a um you by the way women are more malleable because they are more emotional in nature yeah you can buy a sheep herding dog oh, and, yes. and you can train it yourself there we go with and an and it's you can buy that puppy for maybe a thousand dollars and you train it yourself and now you've got a, a dog that will listen to the commands of the owner. It does mm-hmm. the job in the in the aspect and in the manner that the owner wants it to. Woman's a sheepdog. Mm. This is a terrible analogy. And in return, it is treated like, like part of the family. This guy's an idiot. He doesn't know anything about relationships either. I guess that's why his marriage failed. Dude was what, in the military? He said he was a military policeman. He was married for seven years and she stepped out on him. Yeah, we didn't know what the hell he's talking about. Your wife is a sheepdog and you train your wife. And it is loved and respected. Or, or uh, you may not know how to train a, a sheep herding dog. Someone else will train it for you and then they sell it to you for $10,000. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You have virtues and you have values. They match up or they don't. You can't train her to have virtue. You can't train her to be loyal. You can't train her to understand and want to be dutiful. You, you can't do that. You can't change people. 
She either has virtues or she doesn't have virtues. She chooses to get them or she chooses not to get them. You can't change people. You can't train them in a way that changes them and adds to their virtue. What are you talking about? Why does anybody watch this idiot? He's a moron. You simps out there who watch the Joker, he's an idiot. He just regurgitates Kevin Samuel and Tom Likas talking points. His introduction is even from Tom Likas. Don't you get it? This guy is a grifter shill. He is a fake, a fraud, a phony. And he just goes out of his way to tell you as much as he possibly can what he thinks you want to hear. The white pill. There's hope. Things are going to get better. It's shifting red. The pendulum is swinging our way. The the, I think the purpose in a traditional household was you know if if you were a boy, your father raised you how to to grow food, how to protect the farm, how to be a man, how to take care of of the family, how to take responsibility. If the hell does growing food is that, is that what you think providing means? Oh, so we should go back to that. What, what? times don't change. The uh, ways and means of production don't change. Well, what, what are you yammering about? If you're a young woman, you were taught how to clean, uh, how to be feminine, uh, how to cook, how to take care. And then in the end, when both those grow up, the young man has learned how to lead a family because he learned from his father. The young woman has learned how to... I love how he's mixing up the past tense and the present tense, so it's hard to know what the hell he's talking about. Are you giving descriptors of the past, or are you presenting us with an ideal of what you think things should be now? The guy is not a very effective communicator. Take care of a family in her way, because she learned it from the mother. So it's almost like making a copy of, you know, mother to daughter, father to son, and then that young man goes out and he asks a woman for marriage, and they start their smaller slightly smaller photocopy and then their copy of the family and the same thing with a woman is that she sees the role of the father as he is in charge of the household you don't speak back you do as he asks he sees she sees everything that's going on and then she's passed off in those small towns it wasn't really because i've listened to some interviews from some older older both couples Mm -hmm. men and women and both have said well you know in where we lived you didn't have a lot of choice it was you might have two or three other farms and depending on how many kids survived birth back then you might have you might be a young man with a choice of two two or three girls and those women had a choice of maybe two or three men and and you hope for the best but you notice all those families still worked they still yes. worked now today people have choices of hundreds of thousands of people and they can't make something work more than 15 hot minutes right more options are not it's not better it does not make it better because this whole idea it depends on the situation and by the way so far all i'm hearing are descriptors are there going to be any prescriptions after an hour i've heard no prescriptions just descriptors yeah there's plenty of fish in the sea and where he doesn't work out don't worry there that no because that makes you not value what you have right well you don't have anything so who the hell are you talking about why are you even yammering about this? Why should we listen to you? It's the and, fast and, food and of and marriage. And not being grateful. Yeah. And it and it comes down to not being grateful. And it's so funny. I was freaking out just now because you were saying about like the sheep the sheep dog and this. I actually made this analogy the other night I was speaking to somebody and I said, Now, this is Again, I guess they're very, very apropos that they're talking about sheep, by the way, because the majority of you out there watching that follow either of these idiots are just that sheep. I can feel the feminists like getting angry at me right now, but <sighs> feminists say that, oh, it's so oppressive for the man to be in charge. It's so oppressive for him to be the leader of the family and that she has to obey him. Well, That's like saying when PETA, you know, the people for the ethical treatment of animals, they always were like, you should, you should set your horses free. You shouldn't keep them in a pen. You should let your dogs go loose. How dare I keep my dog trapped in this house? It's so. Yeah, those PETA people are stupid saying shit like that. 
I mean, very soon these animals are going to be locked up. They're going to be euthanized because they're killing people. The horses are uh, trampling people. <laughs> the dogs are getting wild and attacking and killing little kids. Uh, PETA. Mm. So oppressive. Like the people, the PETA people will actually say that. And that's the same as the feminists saying, oh, you're oppressed by your husband because you have to obey him. That's okay. I'm only oppressed if you assume that he is tyrannical and evil. However, just like I, with my dog, want what's best for her and want her to be safe. By the way, I think obey, maybe the love, honor, obey, more like follow. He leads, you follow. Safe. My dog lives. But I don't see any problem with obey either. It's better than I do. She's She has the lap of luxury. Because why? Because I love her and it is my job to take care of her. And right. I do that. Does she want to run out in traffic? Yeah. But guess what? She doesn't make the best decisions for herself. So I'm going to make the analogy of, yes, women are going to be dogs in this analogy. So women are the equivalent of dogs that have like a 10 IQ. I don't know. I don't think women are that stupid. I think you are uh, not only infantilizing, but uh, underestimating women's uh, capabilities. <laughs> so I could be wrong. And I'm sorry, feminist, but it just works. Look, if, if I have a husband and I obey him and I respect him and I... But you have no husband, so you don't honor and obey and respect men. Uh, and you are not... Uh, any uh, gold as the bachelor here, butter boy, called you. Because if you were, you would have a husband. And I say, yes, lead me, even if I don't agree with you. Even if I am sure you're wrong, I'm going to do it. Because guess what? If we have to guess, I'm probably wrong. Just like Lola, my dog, is probably wrong when she wants to run outside. Right. Sorry, it just is what it is. And it doesn't mean I hate women. I actually love women more because she might like women a heck of a lot more than we realize. 24 years single. Just saying. They were a lot happier when they were in marriages, when they obeyed and respected their husbands. All this, well, men used to beat their wife. No, they didn't. Not in this culture. Not in Christendom. No, they didn't. You don't have great men like Tom. Well, it did happen once in a while, sure, but it wasn't this proliferate, this uh, effinist claim. Thomas Jefferson and all these other great men coming out of families where, you know, dad is just coming home and beating the tar well, I'm, I'm out pretty of sure, I'm pretty sure they would have made a law uh, concerning that. if they There were laws against abusing your wife. They just had different names. It wasn't... Uh, it, was, it wasn't not illegal. It was most certainly illegal to beat your wife. They wanted to keep make it, make it quite okay to beat wives. But unlike these idiots are saying, like she's saying to try and pander to men, which tells you she's a fake phony fraud. Uh, yeah, husbands have beat their wives in the past. It does happen. So what? Women have beat their husbands. What's your point? That main any is bad is uh, effinist to portray them to be? Yeah, no kidding. And water is wet. How does you telling me that make you somehow intelligent and I should listen to you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Look, <laughs> if y'all wanted to do that, you still could. There's not a darn thing women could do to stand against it. We are not. That's not true. It was illegal. What are you talking about? Not physically stronger. We are not more capable. Uh, We're just not. There isn't anything we could actually do. We didn't fight for our right to vote. No, we didn't. A bunch of simp dudes and some homely women, like, made that happen. We didn't fight for anything. We you, can't. You just complained until people said, well, okay, we'll give you this. Actually, yeah, the majority of women didn't want the vote because they didn't want to get drafted. And they figured that that would be part of it. Yeah, we complained, and it was only like a very, very small percentage of women who even wanted the right to vote. The vast majority of women did not want the right to vote. Because it made them res be you know, responsible. It made them be responsible, and they they were like, well, our husband, my husband votes. Why yeah. would I? That doesn't make any sense. Why would I need to vote? 
This is so stupid. And if you've ever noticed, those women, do you f- find me one pretty feminist? There's not too many of them, I'll tell you that much. You know why? Here's my theory. Because the pretty women who were feminine, they had good husbands and they were grateful for that situation. And they honored their husbands and they did what they should. It's only the homely ones that... That's a long time ago. Almost all Western women, whether they'll admit it or not, are ethanists. They just won't claim it because either they're lacking in self-awareness and don't realize it, or they know that it's not a popular term, ideology, belief system, so they say they're not. But they almost all are. I think the overlord, the overlords could get to, because this was a good way to destabilize society and rip up the nuclear family. It was, it was to impoverish people. It was to impoverish them. It was to double the workforce and double the amount of tax revenue and make people poor. And poor people are more dependent on the state. They're less able to open businesses to compete with already existent companies, corporations, and thereby pull themselves up and become independent and not reliant on the state. These are all things you don't know because you're an idiot. The, the overlords could get to the homely women and get in there like, like, hey... Don't you think that you should be able to vote too, like those men? And They got to all women. I don't know what you're talking about. Not just the homely ones. I mean, the original uh, suffragettes were homely, ugly, broad, sure. But uh, today, all Western women are effinous to a certain degree. Da, 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 da. And they get in the ears of those homely women. And those women are jealous. You mean God. Of the other ones, the, of the prettier women situation. And they want to tear that down and tear that apart. I, I, I could still true. I could see that happening. I certainly could. Has he challenged her in any way on anything? It is still true. I let me tell you, if you have even if you walk with a cane as I do, if you have if you're thin and you have long blonde hair, there's a lot of women who will on sight dislike you. Yeah. And dislike is a gentle term got nothing to do with feminism. Women are just petty. Yeah, I, I, I can't argue with that. I, I, I see what flies around on the Internet. Now, yeah. in if um, what are your <laughs> what are your viewer demographics on your channel? Uh, men to male to female. Oh, I'm boy. guessing it's 90 percent men. Yeah, mostly men. As of late, we've had you simp morons. A couple women come in the chat actually and i'll be like wait are you a woman um so yeah it's it's mostly men it's at least 90 percent men i really want to be able to reach out to more women because i good luck i i know i know it's not gonna happen if they listen to you they lose all their privileges they're not gonna do that it's much easier if you get them one at a time and talk to them one-on-one and I do that. Even she's got all the privileges. Is she is, is she voting away her privileges? How many abortions have you had, honey? How many privileges are you saying? No, nah, no, I don't want them. No, no, no. That in real life, I, in real life, I actually go out and, you know, if it's if it's somebody I'm speaking to. Two body count, my ass. When I see an opening, I'll drop a tidbit here with some of the younger people. That I've come into contact with, I've let them know that the biggest mistake I've made in my life is not prioritizing marriage and, and just overcoming whatever it was in my head that said, oh no, that's not for you. Like I should have prioritized. It's called borderline personality disorder. You're a nut. Then I should have had children because I should have grandchildren right now. Oh, and I don't. You could have had kids. It's a, called a sperm donor. Yeah, you prioritize career. And her career was horse training? And any woman that's like, oh, no, I'm happier. No, she's lying. She's lying. Well, she might be happy now, but she won't be in 20 years. It's like, oh, yeah, you're happy. <laughs> she's in her 20s, in her feelings, in her hoe phase. She's uh, hitting it and quitting it with lots and lots of tad chads and Tyrones. Yeah, she's happy now. Yeah, yeah. Well, not really, but... <laughs>
Uh, uh, then how can you drink a half a bottle of wine at least per night and right. you're on antidepressants? Right. Well, so, is there is there any parting words you would give to uh, guys looking for... Um, I, I give out my advice all the time. What would be your advice to not just young guys, old guys, society, whatever? Well, I don't think it's safe. I can never in good conscience say it's safe to go out there and date and marry. And I, and I hate that. Well, same talking point. Just describing the atmosphere out there. More descriptors, no prescriptors. The prescriptors, when you hear prescriptors, then you're dealing with somebody that has half a brain. Otherwise, you're just telling me if it's hot out or cold out, whoop de doo Because I want that for them. I want them to be able to have a nice lady. The problem is, it's not that every woman will, it's that every woman can. can. And unless and until, you know, family law changes, changes. family law, mm-hmm. you know, divorce law changes, I just can't say, go forth. I use your phrase all the time. You can look for a needle in a needle stack if you want to, but you're gonna get bloodied up while you do it and remember from the hot crazy matrix. It's not a very good, uh, I mean, you'll find a needle, right? It, it should still be a needle in a haystack. Um, she can disappear and reappear at any time in any place on that chart, which means there is no wife zone. Right. So or you, or, we're, or we're seeing wife sure. zones, wife zones 10 years later that she you thought she was a wife and she turns out she wants an open relationship 10 years into the marriage. Exactly. She can disappear and reappear anywhere on that graph at any time. And just because she says, I would never do that. Of course, they're always going to say that. And they probably believe it at the time. So I just say, please, for the love of God, know what you're risking. Right. And just understand that because I, I just have seen what it looks like on the other side. And it's it's just it's terrible out there and i that's such a black pill but you know when you care about when you care about men what are you gonna how can you say oh um, you care about men so much you you, you haven't been one with one for 24 years <laughs> oh do these three tips and it'll be that oh i can't do that all right um yeah. but i also would say if you've been through it yeah, it's not you. It's it's the way the world is and the way the world is against you. But there are communities out there, like on Joker's channel. And I, I say, hey, go to his Saturday night, you know, movie. It's Saturday night, right? Yep. This Saturday night movie night. I'm like, go to that and, and find other men. Just be with other men because Society wants to pull you apart from other men, and you, you need to have that brotherhood. And I think that that is a great place to, um, that's a great piece of advice to give to men. Like, yeah, definitely find your brothers, because they are out there. Well, well, Aaron, I, I appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, that's going to give you support. That's going to give you friends. That's going to give you people to unwind around and spend time with and give you a sense of community. It's not going to save the West. It's not a prescription for anything that is going to save the Western world. But uh, it's good advice to uh, have something to do while the world goes to hell. You what? It's not very good. Oh. Not good. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, if you want to be comfortable as the world crashes, listen to these two. There was a prescription right there to be a little more happy, a little more uh, comfortable, I should say, uh, as the Titanic sinks. But nothing they have told you is going to save the Titanic. Not that it can be saved at this point. Certainly not by listening to these two idiots. Advice. Hey, you know, it meant, I think it, I think it's always a good thing to kind of remind people. Um, that's why, you know, my views have gone down over the years. It's because people get the lesson and move on. I, I think one of the the best. No, it's because you become milk toast, and you become more and more establishment and more and more of a sellout as time goes on, and people have learned what a fake you are and what a fence sitter you actually are, and in fact, how disingenuous 
you really are and that you're just here for the money and you don't give a crap about men you don't give a crap about any of the things you talk about you're just here to spout popular talking points and keep the cashola rolling in compliments you can get is oh, we, we know everything you're going to say man we don't need you anymore that's probably one of the best compliments you could actually get you know so um well if you were actually genuine if you were actually authentic and if you were real and entertaining and had a creative bone in your body uh that wouldn't happen to that extent true yeah well i i appreciate you hopping on here and joining with me i wish you again without spelling your current situation i wish you the luck in your in your romantic endeavor um I, so, at 47 sounds like it'll be an interesting challenge but uh, yeah. I, I wish you all the luck there. She gonna need it. And um, keep, you know, keep up the the great work and, and and keep at it. And I'm sure it's Chameleon Broad is doing great work, even though he could have done so much more for the men's community by promoting a good, competent, but smaller male content producer in the manosphere but oh no 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 i got to try to get me some more to sip dudes and women in my audience and people who think MGTOW is being married and having kids <laughs> some point i'll touch base with you again and see how it's all going for you thank you thank you so much for having me it's been quite a pleasure speaking with you I've nearly fallen asleep. This is one of the most boring interviews I've ever seen. But anyway, let me know what you think. This, he has more to say? Oh, God. Well, that that was Erin from uh, Far From Eden. I think she's a, a, a very interesting woman, a, a good soul. I think her mind and heart are in the right place. And uh, I, I, I wish her all the luck. I'm sure we will be crossing paths with her again at some point. Oh, I bet you will. <laughs> Maybe very soon. Um, but she does bring up some very good and, and interesting uh, interesting thoughts on things, on, on, on how even women were probably happier in the past. If All she did is describe stuff. I don't know. Anybody out there hear anything that they thought was profound or particularly um, perceptive? I, I, I didn't. I found it to be very boring and lackluster and uh, just a bunch of self-promotion. Two people jerking each other off. Uh, it's just a, it was just an hour and 15-minute circle jerk. But uh, <laughs> let me know what you think. Huh? Is a uh, fatter butter bachelor here? Um, is he a genuine good faith actor who really cares about the plight of men or is he just a big fat well he is big and fat but is he a big fat grifter who has uh, just went out of his way to try and tell men exactly what he wants them to hear so he can get the shekels well let me know what you think in the comments and please like and subscribe to my youtube channel if you have not already hit that notification bell we like it when you get notified i like it when you get notified when i post new content leave a comment it's good for the algorithm uh Check out my description for the various ways you can make a donation. And on that note, I'm out of here because my ass is getting hungry after that long-ass circle jerk cringe fest. I am the Realist Philosopher, and I wish you all a good and pleasant day. Take care.